Let's say you're responsible for creating and maintaining infrastructure for your company. Maybe you host your infra on one of many public clouds or on-premise using VMware. It does not matter. Nearly all providers have some sort of UI where you can click buttons to create network components, virtual machines, etc. For example, you can create VPC, Internet Gateway, Subnet and a couple of EC2 instances in AWS Cloud. Now, your development team thinks they ready for release and they ask you to create a couple of more environments where they can test their code. For the best result, all environments should be as close as possible, especially in the clouds. You not only test the application, but also how it interacts with other components, such as security groups in AWS. You can go ahead and try to click the same buttons from UI, but this can lead to the problem if you forget to open a firewall or something else. If you're budget sensitive, Perhaps you need to create and tear down test environment each time, which is not practical if you don't have any automation. To resolve this, you can create a bash script and run it every time you need to create infrastructure. We call this approach imperative when you define a set of commands to get the desired result. On the other hand, you can follow a more reliable declarative approach. In this case, you define the desired result and the tool will perform some actions to achieve that. You can run or execute the plan multiple times and the result will stay the same. Besides the Terraform, Kubernetes would be a good example. It has a reconciliation loop that continuously monitors the desired versus actual state. Terraform would be by far the most popular tool that uses a declarative approach to create infrastructure. Let's start with syntaxes. Terraform uses its own configuration language. It has variables, functions, and a bunch of other stuff. Let's say we want to convert the previously created infrastructure to Terraform. First of all, you need to define a provider. It's a library with resources that allows you to interact with infrastructure provider, such as AWS. Nowadays, you can find a provider for all public clouds and some on-prem solutions, such as vSphere. You can even use this Domino's Terraform provider to order pizza. Or you can build your own provider if you wish. Based on the provider, you have multiple authentication mechanisms. In AWS, you can use the same environment variables, profiles, IAM roles, etc. Terraform language has lots of built-in functions and expressions. For example, the title function converts the first letter of each word in the given string to uppercase. Terraform has the resources that create components. For example, this AWS VPC resource will create VPC in AWS. It also has data objects that can retrieve information about existing components. As an example, you can use it to get seeder of the VPC. To use it in code, you would prepend the data keyword. As with any programming language, you have an option to use variables. In Terraform, you have two types of variables. Locals. You can think of them as private variables available only in the current context, module, and public variables. We often use them with Terraform modules that we will talk about a little bit later. Also, you have output variables. You can simply print out them to the console or use them as input variables in other modules. Ideally, you would practice fully immutable infrastructure. You would create images and use them in Terraform. But in real world, Often after the infrastructure is provisioned, you need to either configure something on virtual machine or install the software. For that, you would use Terraform provisioners. You have a remote provisioner. It will be similar to SSH the host and execute a command or a script. For that, you need to establish a network connection with the host. You can use either username and a password to SSH to the instance or private and public keys. Also, you have a local provisioner. It executes commands locally on your machine. We frequently use this type of provisioner with Ansible to install and configure software on the target. Often, you need to create multiple resources of the same type. For example, you want to create two virtual machines. You can copy-paste resource objects. A little bit better approach would be to use the count variable. In that case, you won't get direct access to individual instances. The best approach is to define a map and specify all the parameters to be able to customize them later. When you execute a plan, Terraform will keep track of each component that was created or modified in the file that they call Terraform state. By default, it will store that file locally on the machine where you run your Terraform. If you work in a team, you constantly need to share that file with your team members. If another person doesn't have up-to-date state and runs Terraform, they may destroy some part of your infrastructure. As a solution, Terraform can store that state remotely and lock it when someone runs Terraform. For example, you can keep your state in S3, JS Bucket, Console, Terraform Cloud, etc. Every time you make a change in the code, try to run Terraform FMT to format the code. 
Then you would run Terraform init to download all the providers and initialize Terraform state. To preview the changes, you can run Terraform plan. When you are ready, run Terraform apply. Very often you have infrastructure created manually and some part is managed by Terraform. You can import existing infrastructure to Terraform using Terraform import command. You can also remove some objects manually from the Terraform state as well. Now to Terraform modules. Those are similar to functions. They are useful when you have many different environments and don't want to copy-paste Terraform code. Instead, you can create a folder and place all the code there. It's going to be a Terraform module. You can define input and output variables. You can also host your Terraform module in Git and use Git tags for version control. When creating a module, try to make it as flexible as possible. Use variables everywhere and define defaults for them. Infrastructure is never static. It tends to change and it's a huge pain to update the module and all the environments where it is used. In some cases, I would prefer copy-paste Terraform code instead of creating modules if I need to maintain that infrastructure in the future. Terraform definitely helps to maintain your infrastructure and follow GitOps approach, but it's not a silver bullet. Use your common sense instead of trying to convert everything to Terraform.